So, you have a budget of about 250 bucks and looking to get a new graphics card, but which one is it gonna be? And do you have to buy new or is it a better idea maybe to get a used card like this RTX 2080 Ti? A few months ago, we already did a video on an RX 6650, which at the time was about 250 bucks and was relatively new then. Since then, the RX 7600 came out, which is basically a slightly downclocked version of the 6650 XT, but uh, at the same price. So this video still is relevant. On the Nvidia side, there has not been much new. So um, the RTX 4060 can be had around 310, 20, 30 bucks if you are really lucky and that is not really faster but what if we looked at the used market there is some options out there for example you could get obviously a 3060 or even a 3070 maybe if you get lucky and find a deal for that money obviously the 3070 would be quite a good deal because power wise it would be better than the 6650 but there's another contender that is pretty much the best choice you can make if you want the most power, which is the RTX 2080 Ti. I've got one from EVGA here. Obviously, you're not gonna find a liquid cooled version for 250 bucks, but that's just an example for our tests. We turned down the power limit to the stock 250 watts of the 2080 Ti so that we have an equal comparison if you get a normal card or for example a founders edition or just one with a cheaper cooler but in general you can expect the same out of that card as you would with this in this test and this is where it gets really exciting because if we test some games we have used a variety of games like Hogwarts Legacy, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, Forza Horizon 5 and so on. This time we tested without ray tracing because first of all the ray tracing wasn't so great on the RTX 20 series cards because it was the first one, uh, first series where it was introduced and the performance was kind of meh. And on these cards obviously they are aimed at a lower tier of gaming, mostly 1080p. But you can also get away for, with 1440p most of the time, especially if you use FSR, which has gotten really good in the last few months or even in the last few years since it has been out for quite some time. So that is also capable of doing even 1440p or even 4K gaming to some extent. In games we can see that the 2080 Ti is mostly between 40 and 20% faster than the 6650, That's, but there's a caveat to it because the card requires quite a lot more power and therefore a larger PSU. As I said, the card is going to hit that 250 watt power limit pretty much in every title so you are going to have to get a bigger power supply or do something we are going to look at later and also your power bill is going to increase although you might not think that it is as much as some people make it out to be because it's just 100 watts and you're not going to game 24 hours a day 365 days a year so it's not going to be like 200 bucks it's only going to be like 30 or whatever so it is not that huge of a deal but still if you want to save on power there is an option you can do this would be reducing the power limit to actually the same level that this card would be this card the 6650 consumes about 130 watts in total in gaming and uh, that's basically the power limit some games do get to those 130 watts and some don't depending on how heavy the load is or whatever but in most cases uh, 130 watts is going to be hit and as i said you can reduce the power limit on the 2080 ti to that level as well so you can make the card pull as little power as this one you might say Okay, but isn't the um, performance going to be lower uh, around 50 to 60 percent as well? Not really, because the efficiency when running at a higher voltage uh, for 
GPU cores or even CPU cores, it's basically the same thing, goes down at, um, let's say, about 80% power that they are usually run at. So the efficiency curve is kind of going like this. So if you turn down the power consumption or the power limit of a card, it up to 80% or so, you are not gonna lose much performance, only like maybe 5% or so. And this is why undervolting works very well. We've shown that in some videos before, but we took it a step further on this card. We took it down to only 130, 140 watts. So as I said, almost the same as this. And then if we wouldn't have touched the clock speeds, Obviously, the card was much slower. We did only hit like one gigahertz or something. But if you increase the clock speeds as well to a level that uh, was still stable, then you could regain about 25% or 20% or so of the performance that had been lost due to the lower power consumption. So you're still gonna have about 15 to 20 percent more performance than this card even though the power consumption is the same and obviously if a card is going to be run at such a low voltage it is going to last much longer because electronics do last longer the less voltage you are uh, they are using and also the less current they are pulling and therefore the less power they are using therefore also the less heat they're producing. So also in the summer, that's a benefit that you have if you do undervolting. But still, you can use that here and still get more performance than this card. Even if you do not want to undervolt the card, then, well, obviously you can have that power on tap if you decide to. But from my view, it's kind of a no-brainer to get this card over this if you can find it for 250 bucks. What's your opinion on this? Are you someone that rather would buy a new card with warranty on it that has some new technology like for example FSR, which this one has DLSS, which would be the equivalent, and um, as I said, a warranty on it, so you can have it replaced if it's dead in like two or three years or are you saying well i can get more performance out of the same cost why not just grab this and have more fun added an extra benefit of this card obviously is the 11 gigabytes of vram so that's also kind of sweet if you run higher resolutions or some games just require more vram especially in the future so you might be more future proof although on such cheap cards, which obviously is kind of weird to say at a $300 or $250 price point, but at such a low price point, mm, I don't know if it's that of a benefit. Anyway, let us know what you think of this video, of this comparison, and if you liked it, give it a like and uh, maybe subscribe to the channel. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.